Hi, I'm Danny Zager from uh, Zager Easy Play Guitars. Uh, a lot of you get your new guitar and you're sitting there saying, wow, this really plays easy and it's the way it's supposed to play. That's the way we set it up. Uh, a guitar that plays easy is super, uh, in a lot of ways, the main thing is it gets you excited about playing. It, uh, it takes the bite out of forming some of these chords. But this video is about basically getting an edge on your guitar. I always stress with any of my students to learn how to play a little bit lighter. When you get your guitar, it's set up for, well, not heavy-handed players, but people that really get into it pretty heavy. And if uh, the guitar isn't set up right for that, it's going to buzz and rattle. Needless to say, this is, this is not what you want when you play. Uh, you want something that uh, plays easy, but uh, uh, you want to be able to get into it a little bit. Some people are, they've just got a heavier hand, they're used to strumming heavier. And our guitars are set up for that. But let's say uh, you hear one of my videos and uh, uh, I say, uh, heavy hands are the devil's workshop. <laughs> uh, another way to say that uh, uh, your heavy hand is going to cause you to have to set up the instrument and bring those strings up higher. And the higher they are, the harder it is to play. So if you tend to be, uh, today's guitar has a transducer and all kinds of amplification devices and things like that. You don't need to beat on it to get volume out of it. Uh, you can uh, get a middle of the road uh, strum. Uh, in fact, I'll, uh, I'll give you an idea of a pick. The pick, when you strum, first of all, it should bend a little bit. Uh, you shouldn't attack it really hard like that. You should be playing more like that. In other words, I get good volume out of it, but I don't beat it to death. Keep it in mind, too, if I don't strum as hard, I'm not pulling it out of tune. Now, naturally, I stretch and bend the strings on everything that goes out. Get all the variations out of the string, then I tune it up, and then it stays. People always call in, they say, God, your guitar stays in tune so well. Why does it do that? Because they, I stretch and bend, and I've got videos that you can watch me do that and see exactly what I do. I bend right up here in front, with my just with the flat edge of my thumb, and uh, uh, I, uh, I tug on it, each one individually, and, and go through and then tune it up. And that's the last you have to worry about that for quite a while, going out of tune. Now, again, if you're a heavy-handed player, you're going to be going out of tune all the time because you're pulling those strings a lot more and you're getting buzzes and rattles. Well, let's say that you get your Zager guitar and you say, I, I want to practice being a light-handed player. It's called finesse. You learn to get a hold of that instrument. You get volume out of it, but you don't, you don't pull the strings out of tune. I could always tell when somebody else played my guitar because it's always out of tune when I get it into my hands. If I get it into my hands and I play the way I have trained myself to play, more years than I want to count, uh, I, uh, I find that uh, uh, it's just fine for me. Uh, it stays in tune simply because I don't violate the rules. Now, let's get back to where we started out. You got your Zegger guitar, but you want to give it just a little more an edge. Um, all you have to do, keep it in mind, a truss rod setting, you can go one way and you can go back the other way. The way we get our best setting is, is kind of like setting a heater or something. You set it high and it's too hot. You set it low and it doesn't heat enough. Uh, so in this situation, we want to get the height that we're comfortable with playing. Now the beauty of a truss rod setting is if you set it wrong, you can just go right back in and reverse what you did before. In this situation to set a truss rod, the truss rod is right inside and you get a truss rod with uh, every guitar that goes out. 
uh, truss rod setting. Now, I, we do have a tape set on, I mean, on these because we're working with the brand new pieces and uh, we don't like it to scrape the string. And uh, so we just put just a little, you know, uh, electrical tape on there. It doesn't matter what kind of tape. And it keeps you from scratching the string or the side of the guitar. So that fits in. Wiggle it around a little bit. Okay. Now, keep in mind, your guitar comes from us set just right in the middle. Don't mess with it if you're happy with it. Uh, it's going to take you a while to get good at this truss rod setting. You won't do it overnight. The first setting you'll get, you say, well, I don't like that. It's a little bit... If, if you go too far, you're going to get buzz. If you go too far the other way, you're going to get too much string height. In other words, that's the distance from the string to the frets. A lot of times, I'll look down a neck, and I'll just sight down right here on either side. And uh, in fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if you can see that from the camera. I can just sight down right here or here and see the bow in that neck. If you see a bow in it, we, we set them up mostly to be pretty straight. And, uh, uh, and we can uh, adjust the height with the saddle. We don't suggest you get into that because you open a can of worms there. This truss rod setting is any average person can set a truss rod. And you can go after just a little bit more. A lot of times when I demonstrate guitars, I like to set them up for me. We set them up for you, the average player, and that's fine. But as you advance a little bit, you realize that string could be set to play just a little bit easier. Now, we're not going to get much turn out of this truss rod. If you turn clockwise, the neck is going to go back. If you turn counterclockwise, it's going to go up. So you can tell by, I, I, I sight down the neck. You can see where that neck is. I, I'm just glancing right down like I showed the camera. So you get, you get used to doing that. But uh, where you us uh, usually test your setting is by playing. If, if, you're getting, if you're getting a buzz like that, needless to say, you've got problems, you've taken it back too far. So if, uh, now let me explain this again. Counterclockwise is going to make this neck go back. Clockwise, no, did I say that right? Clockwise is going to make it go back. Counterclockwise is going to make it move forward. So, uh, when you get your guitar, it will have such a minute bow if it has any bow at all. And what I do, if I want to demonstrate one of ours, and I know it's been set up the normal way, I play very lightly and I can get by with it playing like a breeze. Most people would play my same guitar and they buzz strings all over the place. That's not our advantage to set it up for that. This, only the more advanced player gets into this getting this edge. And this edge is a guitar that plays like a breeze. Now what I do is I encourage you to set it up this way and then use a capo on top of that. When you use a capo, Naturally, I have uh, other tape or videos, I should say, that, that talk about the capo and how we use it and why we use it. Some people call it a crutch. Well, it's actually a tool. And the way I use it is as a tool, not as a crutch. But uh, the capo is pretty vast, and uh, I'm not going to touch on that now. But the fact that you set this a little bit closer so they're down, and don't buzz. Now, like I say, if you get it too far, you can always go back on it. So what you have to do is get used to working with this truss rod. The, you'll only set it once every six months or so, really, uh, after the first time you get it set where you like it. And uh, leave it alone. That's, that's the secret. Let your guitar settle in the place that you like it. So every time you pick it up, those strings are where they should be, keeping in mind. This is counting on the fact that you always have it tuned up to pitch. As you tune it down, you lower the stress and the neck and the bend in the neck. All that changes. So you're tuned to what we call concert pitch. That's where your guitar was designed to perform the best. 
So in this getting back to what I say, getting this edge. Well, I know that if I take a regular Zegger guitar, it's set up just a little bit too high for me. I can get by just with a little bit more turn on this, and I want to turn it clockwise just a little bit, and it'll be just from there to there. That'll probably be all you turn it. Get, get it right in between the strings and find that. I think you can see it here. In other words, okay, now you can tell it wiggles around a little bit. Now I'm going to push it this way just a little bit. Now, I'm not, this thing's very finely set up, so I'm going to leave it alone. But if it's, uh, if your string buzzes for you, a lot of you send in and say, well, my strings buzz a little bit. Well, you're probably a little bit heavy-handed, maybe, but if you want to set your guitar up for you so you can get by with this heavy-handed, then I would go this way. In other words, I would pull it this way instead of going that way. And it only takes a half a turn a lot of times. Uh, so, in other words, uh, I would... Uh, I would push it from here, maybe out to here. That's it. Or you can go back. Now, as it goes, again, reviewing here, as you turn it clockwise, it's going to pull this neck back, and your strings are going to flatten out more. And if, you've, if you push it far enough, you'll get buzzes all over. That's normal. What I always do is I set it up so it buzzes. And then I keep turning it backwards just a little bit until that buzz disappears, and that's what you want. Now put on your capo there, you've got Utopia. That's it.